What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around at the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. With that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Finlogan Cast Strength. Stick around. So this is not a whiskey that I expected to be reviewing this week. I put a poll up on Patreon and I asked my patrons which peated whiskey they wanted to see reviewed this week. Uh, the choices were this or Laphroaig 10 Cast Strength or Glen Glassaw Torfa. And I thought the Laphroaig 10 would be an absolute shoe in but it turns out people want to hear about this one. And I guess that kind of surprised me. This one is a mystery malt, meaning it's one of many brands of single malt peated Isla whiskey from an undisclosed distillery. And I guess in my mind, these kinds of whiskeys are always like background players. They don't always get a lot of attention from the whiskey world. And I think that just comes from people wanting to connect their whiskey to a face or a distillery as it were, but that might be changing. I think that people voting to see this whiskey reviewed could be indicative of a broader shift in interest. We might be seeing whiskeys like this come into the spotlight more than they traditionally have been. Or, I could be reading too much into a Patreon poll with a sample size of literally 14 people. But we're already starting to see a shift in interest for things like blended malts, which really seem to be taking off recently, and that's because of prices. Um, and I know, you know, pretty much every conversation about whiskey in 2022 seems to be focused on prices, but fair play. I mean, we've had the biggest spike in prices that I've ever seen over the past year, and shit be expensive. And a lot of that is just brands trying to make as much money as possible. And of course, your company, the purpose of a business is to make money. I do understand that. But you push too hard and you price too high and you're going to start alienating your customers. And I do think we're seeing that happen a lot these days. I'm not going to name names, but you know who you are. And it's not just that. We also have another minor factor of the entire global economy basically collapsing. Uh, everyone says we're on the verge of a recession. Things are less stable these days. And of course, there's going to be supply chain issues and the prices of production are going up across the board. Of course, that's going to affect prices as well. Still, why not? I can get a finger wag too. So let's send a finger wag out to the global economy. Asshole. Anyway, getting back to my original point, we have stuff out there like Finlogan or Iliac or uh, Smokehead or Scarabus or others and they seem to be getting more popular these days and I think there's good reason for that. They are single malts that are from Isla, they're often well presented, and they don't have the pomp or the branding that a lot of Isla distilleries have, nor do they have the cost of distillation to consider which probably softens the blow. So generally speaking, whiskeys like this have stayed relatively affordable and nowadays affordable is uh, it's a sexy word. As for Finlagen itself, these guys are owned by the Vintage Malt Whiskey Company. They also own stuff like the Iliac, and it's a mystery malt, so by nature we're not going to know too much about it. We don't know where the whiskey was sourced. We don't know the age. We don't know much about the production process. We do have a lot of question marks here, but I suppose that comes with the territory. Regardless, let's jump into our review, see what the whiskey is all about, and in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. So this one is their cast strength expression. We have a whopping ABV of 58% here, which if I'm being honest, can sometimes be too high for me. Sometimes it works out great and the whiskey is beautiful. Other times the whiskey is too loud. It's kind of too much of a beast for me. And it comes across with all the subtlety of a brick to the face. But to be fair, we always do have the option to add water. So not really a big deal. As my mother always says, it's better that the ABV be too high than too low. She's never said that. Now I don't think this is a chill filtered whiskey. Why would it be at 58%? But I do think there's been some color added. So we've got two out of three. So I believe this to be a fake tan color. As for the bottle itself, I don't love it. It's not really my style. Um, usually I like this kind of look, you know, it's simple, it's straightforward. It does have a bit of design. It does have a bit of flash to it, but this one doesn't really work for me. I usually like the double label look. I do like the bottom label here, but the top one doesn't work for me and I couldn't tell you why, but not really my style. I'll give it two and a half out of five for presentation. There's nothing about color or chill filtration on the bottle or on the box. 
There is a lot of markety gobbledygook about Finlogan Castle. Now Finlogan Castle is on Isla, but there's no distillery there, and the brand that owns Finlogan doesn't have a distillery at all, uh, and they're headquartered in Glasgow. Now maybe they do have ties to Isla, I don't know, but they've definitely attached themselves to Finlogan Castle, and as a result, they can use terms like Lords of the Isles on their packaging. They can look like a brand that's steeped in history, and I guess fair enough. You know, they're they're playing the game. I am being a little bit cynical here, but. Come on. So I did add a good dose of water here. Let's try our nose. So it's very big. It's very Isla. Peat smoke, iodine, uh, plenty of citrus in here. We got lemon. Bacon. Um, candied apples, but like yellow apples. Golden Delicious apples. There's dried banana chips in here, there's honey, there's burnt caramel, we have hazelnuts, and we have some vanilla. We do have more fruitiness in the nose than we would get from a typical Isla, which is interesting. And now our palate. All right, um, oily, viscous, there's big flavor here, even with water. Uh, a sweetness creeps in pretty quickly on the arrival. We got lots of smoke here. And we have barbecue, uh, like burnt ends with a hickory barbecue sauce, but a hickory sauce that's maybe a little bit more sour than usual. So yeah, that initial hit of sweetness on the arrival kind of transitions into something only slightly more sour with like these semi-sour hickory barbecue sauce notes in here. It's very saucy, like A1 steak sauce, uh, maybe even a little touch of apple vinegar. And all that sounds much more sour and off-putting than it actually is. The sweetness never goes away. We keep that sort of counterbalance going. This is nice. And now we're finished. All right, nice. Um, the sweetness comes back. Um, big cola note here. Cola, cherry cola, Dr. Pepper. So like these dark effervescent cola notes. We have um, coal smoke. We have charred brisket. We have black pepper. We've got more burnt caramel in here. There's more smoke. There's some orange juice type notes in here. This is a long finish with lingering soda sweetness and some wintergreen. Okay, so this is a bottle that I've had for ages. And for the longest time, I'll admit, I kind of ignored it. And that's probably because when I first popped it, I wasn't really blown away. But now I'm starting to like get back into it. I'm digging into it more. And I don't know if it's the time that it's been open or if it's me that's changed, but I'm really liking this now. Like, this stuff is interesting. And I'll be honest, peat bombs aren't necessarily my favorite style of whiskey. And don't get me wrong, I do love peated whiskey. Most of the time, I like peat as an element in my whiskey. Sometimes when it's too dominant, when the peat is too much of a monolith, too much of a beast, I feel like it just dominates everything, it overtakes all the other flavors, it's too much of one thing, and that's not always my favorite style. Unless it's really well done. And this is really well done. The peat in here is definitely dominant, but it's not just this one singular note that punches you in the face throughout the entire experience. It doesn't change. The peat in this, the smoke in this are more dynamic than that. They change form. Uh, things start off on the nose with, of course, big smoke, big peat, but then we have this sweet fruity element worked in. And that sweetness continues on the arrival and then it briefly transitions into that semi-sour hickory barbecue sauce note. Now it's not too sour, just think of hickory barbecue sauce that's a little bit lighter on the sugar and a little bit heavier on the vinegar. And like, I love vinegar, I love it in cooking, but I don't like sour whiskey. Don't worry, it never really goes in that direction. It's just a nice little counterbalance and it's brief. Actually, you know what it is? It's tangy. Uh, and I don't think I've ever used the word tangy on this channel before, but this whiskey's got some tang to it. 
And then finally in the finish, it comes back around to that soda-like sweetness with cola notes and vanilla notes carrying things off. Uh, we've, got, we've got some other great flavors in here. We've got burnt meat and coal and smoke. It's good. Actually, this one hits like a meal to me, but a very specific one. We've got a burnt pepper steak. We've got burnt ends and they're doused in hickory barbecue sauce. We've got a side of caramelized onions. We've got candied golden delicious apples for dessert. And we got two glasses in front of us. One of them's cherry Coke. The other is orange juice. And we're enjoying a cigarette. Breakfast of champions. And it's worth noting that I added more water here than I usually do. And trust me, this stuff can swim. Of course, with water that opens up some of our complexity, but it also rounds out a lot of the rougher edges. This whiskey does not feel like a beast with a touch of water. In fact, it's surprisingly gentle and rounded. And you know, in the past, I've been very critical of a lot of these undisclosed Isla single malt types. I found a lot of them to be too young, too hot, uh, too sharp, too simple. I wasn't a big fan. And this one kind of turns a lot of that on its head. I really enjoy this one. It's a lot more civilized than I remember it being. So this is good stuff, and I don't know if it's me that's changed, although I have noticed a pretty dramatic shift in my preferences over the last year or so, or if it's because this bottle has been open for a year and that interaction with the air has softened a lot of the rougher edges. I don't know what happened there, but I really enjoy this whiskey. I'm going to score it an 87. And trust me, I did not see that coming. Because really, these kinds of whiskeys are usually low 80s for me, but I find myself especially charmed by this one. Um, I definitely think it's a great whiskey. I think you should be checking it out. It is a legitimately nice and interesting Isla single malt. And of course, something like this we have to factor in value as well. So let's discuss. So for what it is, I think this is cheap. In fact, I'd say this is one of your better bang for buck Isla offerings out there. It's got more complexity than you might think. It's of course big and bold with the ABV. But it's not too young, it's not too hot, it's not too sharp, it is nicely rounded. So a lot of the criticisms that I've traditionally held against these kinds of whiskeys have gone out the window for this one. This one offers plenty of character and plenty of flavor at a great price. And if you're getting tired of the price gouging and the premiumization that's happening across Isla and across the whiskey world in general, and you want a competent, well-made and delicious PD whiskey for a great price, this one's got your back. All right, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. That is always appreciated. And of course, I do want to hear from you. Have you tried our Finlogan cask strength? Have you tried any of the other unnamed, undisclosed Isla single malts out there? What are your thoughts? Finally, down below in the comments, you can also let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.